What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode six of Brick Talk. This is our podcast where we talk about Lego investing. We're going to talk about some pretty good deals that have been happening lately. And we're also going to talk about some great pickups and some great passes so that we don't get caught with a set that's not going to perform well. So before we even start, I have a question for you. How much of your buying have you already done? David, that is a good question. And honestly, I don't have a good answer for it. I haven't really like figured out a budget or amount that I'm going to spend, which I know is not good for a business model or anything like that. I kind of do this also when I figure out what sets to pick. I kind of let the sales drive what I'm going to buy. I know that some people, when they're investing in sets, they'll have like the 15 sets that they're definitely going to get. You want to go tall, not wide, like we talked about. So they might have the sets that they're absolutely going to invest in. And for me, I'm more like I've got the list of 30. And in my head, I know what price point that I would then go in on if I could find it at that price. And so I let the sales drive which of those 30 I will pick. And I also let the sales drive sometimes how deep I'll go into a set. You know, in my mind, I probably have some sort of number. But if I'm at that number and we get to the end of the year and there's another great discount out there, I'm not going to, you know, unless I'm totally out of cash, I'm not going to let that prevent me from going in on that set too. So that's the long answer. Short answer is that I would say I'm probably about 70% already. How about you? Yeah, I can feel a lot of those same things that you feel. There is a budget and a, oh, honey, we need to sell a kid. There's a great (laughs) deal available on the UCS Republic gunship. So yeah, I feel really similarly. My goal going into this year was to go deepest into the sets with the highest discounts to ensure that comfortable margin of safety. So yeah, that's kind of just Lego investing 101. But yeah, I'm also right around, I would say 60% done with my purchasing already, if not more. A lot of these October sales have been really great. And that actually brings us into some sets that I wanted to talk about for good set, bad set today. Let's get into it. The 75344 Boba Fett Starship Microfighter. It's the Slave One Microfighter. It's $10, which is wonderful. It's kind of the last of the outgoing $10 microfighters because after this they raised it to 13 and now $16 which is ridiculous. So this is kind of an inherently good value. So what caught my interest is if we look at this set here on Walmart, add it to the cart, we can add as many of these to our cart as we want. Tapping up there 18, 19, 20. Suppose I wanted to speculate in 20 of these sets. Well at 20% off here, that's only going to cost me $160 plus tax. I saw a really cool Lego investing YouTube from last year from a prominent channel stating that basically their best performer in 2021 was actually a microfighter. It was the Kylo Ren's microfighter that I think shot up on Amazon for something like $26 shortly after retiring. I'm sure that was a $10 microfighter also available, I'm sure, for $8. So as I'm looking at the Boba Fett Starship, I'm thinking maybe it could be a similar thing. Now that I figured out you can add up to like 72 to your Walmart cart, I'm thinking about maybe investing in a bulk quantity of this set, of course, only for Amazon FBA, if you're not fulfilling your own orders. Only if you're doing Amazon FBA. So if you are going to get those and sell them on eBay, you would not be going into it? I would not because if you're fulfilling your own order, it takes so much time that you don't want to be selling a $10 set that you got for $8 for $25 on eBay. Because yeah. after you're shipping and your fees, you're only making like $8 on your $8, which is 100% return on investment, but it's like you wasted your time to make $8. That's exactly where I was going. So I love the set and it's going to have a fantastic return on investment in my opinion, but you got to sell a lot of them to really make it worth it. And then that's a lot of time per set. So it's a great little little set, but the price point is just too low, in my opinion, to dive into it. So do we agree? Good set? Well, we agree in some areas, but we disagree in other areas. You're more leaning in that, yep, it's worth getting. You got to look right here. 100 100 plus bought since yesterday. That is a good point. You got to go with the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. (laughs) I'm leaning towards it's just not worth my time. That's a fair assessment. I can't argue with that. All right. My first set for good set, bad set, 75354 the Coruscant Guard gunship. The Shock Trooper looks really good. Palpatine Mm -hmm. looks great, but there's one major issue, which is that Fox's print is pink, and they put only one application. What's that phrase that only the best is good enough or something like that (laughs) for Lego? What is going on here? Because this figure could look so, so good. Terrible in the production. I feel bad for the designers who put all the effort in to make this happen. And then in the factory, they decided to skimp out. How sad is that? It's so noticeable 
possible that, that I'm tempted to get white out and like fix it myself. As we know, Clone Wars gunships do very well. This one is already up to $1,000. All of these are increasing in value, $600, $500. And then the UCS gunship that is retiring at the end of this year, which is a fantastic pickup if you were able to get some. I wish that the white was all light bluish gray. I think that the contrast between the dark red, which I love, and the white is just too much contrast. And so I, I kind of wish that those engines weren't so bulbous looking. It looks like a beluga whale. It's like chunky. Between the clone vehicles for 2024, I think I'm going to lean toward the ATTE over the gunship. I'm just not loving it. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I mean, I guess. I'm not excited about it, but this I'm is my it. second set today. The two in one Hoff battle pack. This is this year's Walmart two in one. Last year was a three in one, and the previous year was also a three in one. So this year is a little smaller of a set. I was a little shocked to see that the Snowtrooper battle pack and the Hoth ATST are going here for $45. That's a pretty good deal. So the way that I thought about this set in terms of value is I'm getting the Hoth ATST for $30, 40% off of its MSRP, as well as the Snowtrooper Battle Pack for $15, 25% off of its MSRP. Another very important point that I'm realizing as I go to sell last year's three-in-one packs is that the large outer box on last year's three-in-one makes it very expensive to ship because it's such a large, thin box. Whereas this year's two-in-one pack is a lot more friendly to shipping and keeping costs down. So even if you want to sell this set as a pack, you potentially could do that. Whereas last year it would have been a lot more worth your time to break up the pack and sell the sets individually. That is a really good point. I am not going to pick up this set at that price. The ATSTs just don't interest me too much for investing because we've already had a lot of them. I would need to be around 20 to $25 to want to invest in this set. You know, some battle packs are hits and some of them are flat and just don't do well as an investment. I think the Snow Trooper Battle Pack is one of the better ones, but I think because of it being Snow Troopers with the Scout Trooper in the set, I don't think it's going to be great. And so I would want to see that one at 50% off, so $10. So we're at 35% off of these. My thought would be 50% or better. I think LEGO's doing an interesting move by retiring the Snow Trooper Battle Pack before the UCS AT-AT. So as long as they keep that large AT-AT on shelves, there's going to be kind of a trickle of demand for Snow Troopers. And if there isn't a new set on shelves containing Snow Troopers, a lot of people are going to be looking at this retired battle pack. So for that reason, I've upgraded my rating on the Snow Trooper battle pack. I bought three of them contained in these two-in-one sets, but uh, that's all. You know, we're going to have to make a future segment and we'll come back to something like this and let's see how we ended up doing on the ones that we don't see eye to eye on because I am very curious two years from now what this set is looking like. Yeah. All right, David, something a little bit different for my next set. This is 10273, The Haunted House. It is part of the Fairground Collection. I don't like this set. Didn't this get bumped in price from 250 up to 300? I think it did. But my two main issues with this set, number one, it's ugly. I do not like the olive green. I just don't like the color. It looks like baby barf. And then my other big issue with this set is that if it's a fairground collection, it's all about seeing the motion of the ride. And this is just a drop elevator. Oh, by the way, the reviews I've seen say that it gets a little sticky in there too. So it doesn't work the best. Other than these windows where you kind of look in, you can see it drop, but it drops really quickly. So it's like a flash as it goes by. You don't see much motion. So some people have talked about this set as flying under the radar. I'm not buying it all. I'm avoiding this set. But let's at least acknowledge that there are other very good sets in the fairground collection, like the original Grand Carousel. Oh, yeah. I remember looking at that in Lego catalogs back in like 2009. This set's awesome. Yeah. Did you buy 10 of them? No, I wish I had. Too bad. It's close to $2,000. The Ferris wheel is doing well. And then the second carousel is doing well. Roller coaster, not yet. Probably just too big in terms of how much space it takes up. But when you look at all these and how brightly colored they are and how much is going on and how much motion and movement there is, I just don't see where this fits. With the Haunted House, I was thinking of this set completely differently. I was thinking about this set basically as a modular for people to work into their urban setups. Or I, I know a lot of people incorporate the Daily Bugle into their modular mm -hmm. setups. And so from that perspective, I could see the Haunted House being appealing. But yeah, I'm right with you. For $200, $250, let's say you get it on sale or you got it before the price increase. I don't see this being a good investment. I'm personally going to steer way clear of this. So the next set I want to talk about is this 40600. So this set was recently available actually twice so far this year for purchases of $100 from lego.com. And the first time that it went out of stock, the price on eBay went up over like $60 or $70, which is mind boggling for a spend of only $100 to get $70 of value back is absolutely nuts. This gift of purchase was one of the craziest 
it went out of stock like instantly within a day. However, when Lego brought it back this last time, it looks like the stock they created was much higher. And so as a result, we've seen the price fall all the way to like $35, $32 ship, $30 there, $30 plus shipping. So it's still a pretty solid gift with purchase, about 30 to 35% of your spend back. Keep in mind, you'd have to ship and pay eBay fees. So everything is going to be a little bit reduced by that. But uh, anyway, the price on this gift with purchase has really taken a huge dive. I do own a couple and I love this set for one special reason, which is that it has a light brick. To me, that's a huge value add. Between that and the exclusive Mickey Mouse minifigure, that's worth, I think, around $20. This gift with purchase could have some legs and it could shoot right back up. I totally agree, but that's because I'm biased because I also picked up a few. There are just some really unique elements. You mentioned the light brick, but remember, there's the little print that the light brick projects onto the screen, which is very special. And then also that little, you can see it right there on the screen, the little Mickey print of Walt doing an original sketch is very special. So there's some unique pieces here and it just looks so good together. It's one of those rare gift with purchases, in my opinion, that actually looks like a nice display piece. Gift with purchases to me are kind of a tale of two stories. Some of them you look at, you're like, oh, that could be sold as its own individual set and it would be popular enough. But then there are some of them. I don't know. The four by four ago. Um, ambulance? Was it yeah, the four, a little by four, four by ambulance? four ambulance? And it was a nice little set. But when <laughs> I looked at it, I was like, no, that I don't think that would meet Lego's standards to be like its own sold set. It looked a little thin to me. Oh, and I totally disagree. I think it totally could have fit in with the city line at the $15 price point. When I looked at it, I was like, ah, they made it just good enough for a gift with purchase, but they were quick to throw it together and say, hey, it's a gift with purchase. If anybody would like to purchase about five of those, I do have a lot of those and I do not want them. <laughs> and I think another good example is this new one here. Hit me up, people. The, oh, the pirate. Scary Pirate Island. And it's a nice little gift with purchase, but this to me looks more like a extra gift set after all the fees and shipping. I think you're getting about $12 out of eBay for it. All right, Kevin, coming back once again to the bundle. Here we have a pirate VIP pack. We can bundle the Pirate Cove and possibly sell that with the Pirates of Barracuda Bay if we're sitting on that or the Creator Pirate Ship in a pirate themed bundle to cut down on our shipping costs and save on our time as well. I was going to beat you to it with this set, but no, no, no. You got to me first on the bundle. Nobody but beats me to the bundle. It's a it's a great idea. So I was going to say, although this isn't a great one to sell on its own, Pirate is very popular. Yeah. So for me, most my gift with purchases, I actually just hold on to and I wait and heck, it might even be two, three, four years where you're like, hey, that ends up being a nice bundle. You can throw that in and the set that you're selling, the main set that you're selling can get a little extra extra bump on it really didn't cost you anything and you're saving on the shipping and the time and all that like you said right all right david so my next good set bad set is the aforementioned a few minutes ago by you the attee walker i have a love hate relationship with this set how could you hate it i think it looks ugly and i know that it's a cool star wars what do vehicle, you mean it looks it's the best looking it, one ever it is a gray blob yes it does have the commander cody minifigure that is awesome and the clones but if we look at other ATTE walkers. This one to me just looks a little smoother. And I like this one a little simpler, less grieveling, less joints, less weird blobbiness. And yeah, opinion. but you know what? The worst thing is they released an ATTE with one clone trooper. That's the best thing about the 2022 is they give you, I believe, five clone troopers. And that's why it is going to be a profitable set. $90 to $275. And I, be I believe it used to be a lot higher before I the the new 2022 release, I think that used to be closer to $400. Exactly. And then if you go to the one from 2008, it still is at $450. So I used to have that set. In fact, I've owned that set twice. It's a fantastic set. It is. And so obviously it's going to do well, barring some crazy long shelf life. Like all of them, I'm going to be looking for a 30% discount. I'm sure we'll be able to stack and make that happen at some point. It's just so choppy for me. I feel like they took a step backwards. and Wrong. All of this. Way too many studs. Wrong. Look at how smoother this one looks. And cleaner. No, no, it looks like a weird Hasbro thing. The new one run looks more like a Lego creation. Put that yeah. smoothness away. Scroll back up to the 2022. You mean this ugly blob? Yeah, baby. <laughs> 
the due diligence is already there in plain sight. ATTEs do phenomenally. Compared to the Coruscant Guard gunship, I'm way higher on the ATTE for this year than I am on the gunship. For investing and then obviously reselling to make money, this is the one. Yeah, so the ATTE is a phenomenal set. All right. This is a good set. Oh, wait, you're supposed to tell me first and I'm not supposed to show my cards, but it's a good set. It's a good set. I'll admit it. This is the 833 Monkey Kid Evil Macox Mech. Here he is with the weapon on the back. He can also, if you change through the images, hold the staff. He's a pretty sick looking, uh, I'm going to say evil guy. If we look here at the shelf life, just a two year shelf life. Here it is available currently on back order from lego.com. You can get, look at that double VIP. Today is the last day for that. Actually, by the time this video is posted, that'll be over, but there will definitely be some good gift with purchase you can get this set with. In addition to 30% off of its resale price from 90 down to 63. If we look here on Brick Economy, now I know Brick Economy prices can be a little bit suspect. If we look here at pretty much the best performing Monkey Kid set, the Demon Bull King from 2020, $90 retail price went up to $223. We'll see how accurate that is. But if we look here, this set had a less than year and a half shelf life. And look at that growth of 148% on that. That's a great investment. So if we look here, as soon as this set stopped being available down here, it jumped up from about $80 up to $150. And then in the last year, since the start of 2023, it's gone from 280 to about $304. So compared to the MSRP, that's a fantastic investment. But if we look here at the Macaque Mech, the five figures already compose $62.29 of value. You can get the set for basically that. So to me, this is absolutely a good set. I do own one and I'm considering grabbing another now that they're available on 30% discount. It is not a popular theme, but I think that actually can be a good thing because these sets are really well designed. All of them in the Monkey Kid theme clearly Lego put a lot of effort into them. And I think people will look back and say, hey, you know, that could be like another Ninjago where the early Ninjago sets typically do very well. And for a cost basis of like $60. Yeah, you could see this becoming $120 real quick. All right. So my next set is this new Tranquil Garden. It's under the icons theme. The sub theme apparently is miscellaneous. So it's not part of the botanical collection. But obviously, there's a lot of similarities there. David, instead of me telling you what I think, I want to hear first what you think. And then I'll tailor my answer based on what you say, of course, you know, kind of like cheating on the test. But what do you think about this set? My first impression is that this is a 2023 launch. So I'm not even going to consider it until like end of year 2024, because at the earliest, it would have like a one year shelf life, potentially much more. But so I don't even consider sets in their first year. My first impression is that the outer rim of it reminds me a lot of the bonsai tree, which is a super popular set selling thousands and thousands of units on Amazon every month. Shoot, I was going to say something intelligent. We'll put the meme that's no signs of intelligent life. <laughs> but yeah, so even though it's so new and it's really not time to pick it up for investing, I at least want to start looking at it now to track the buzz and the sales velocity. And one thing I really think that's great about it is that this one is designed to quote unquote be played with by adults. All of the trees and plants can be taken out. It's like a little key or a little plug so you can take them out and rearrange them. And so I equate it to being at work and those people have like the little rock garden with the sand and the little rake on their desk and they'll sit there, yeah. you know, do that. And I actually was in somebody's office. We were just talking about some stuff. They had one and we were just talking casually and I spent half the time just like sanding it and raking it and playing with it. I could see adults rearranging this and doing something with it. So maybe play isn't the right word, but it's a very interactive set for adults. And I think that's going to be a major selling point. I agree with you. That bridge looks great as well as that dark bluish gray obelisk. And like you said, the rearrangeability. I think if you could get this set for something like $80, and sell mm -hmm. it for something like 160, you would make just shy of doubling your money around like. 70% on your money, which is pretty good. And I think that's very doable with this set. A little bit like the Venator. Look at it in 2025. Yep. All right. Fantastic. My last set. Ready for it? 75300, the Imperial TIE Fighter, the miniaturized downscaled playscale TIE Fighter from the last couple of iterations of this iconic vehicle. These release every few years. So although this is retiring at the end of the year, there is surely another playscale version not far behind. So this set had a price bump midway through its life from $40 up to $45. That means that a lot of people got this 20% off of the original retail price of 40, meaning they got it for $32. Because I'm sticking very closely to my strategy of not buying very much this year and actually
actually focusing on selling more. I'm just playing with a smaller pool of capital. I'm deploying my capital very strategically. This is a good set, but I did pass on it. I would want to see that at the $25 range, and then I would be getting in on it. But Lego will also produce the next version of the TIE Fighter that they're going to release. And that's an issue with the standard right. common Star Wars vehicles, TIE Fighter, X-Wing. I wouldn't want to dabble in this one either, unless we're looking at $25. I would want to ask you, if you could pick this up for $25, what would be a realistic sell price you could see this set going for maybe two years from now at the end of 2025? I think it will be 50. That would not include the shipping. You know, the shipping would be paid for separately. So I think it'll go for 50, but then you're going to have to pay the fees on it. You'll get about they, 45 I, or so. And so it's about 20, 15 to 20 dollars a unit is where I'm at in two years. I think you're way low. I've seen this set on Walmart when out of stock go for immediately like $64. Although there's a huge spike there at the start of this set's life that sort of skews the scale of this entire graph. Mm -hmm. This line right here is $50. Mm -hmm. So if we follow this across, we can see consistently every year, like December, this set spikes over $50. If we look here on the secondary graph, which sometimes happens with Amazon, consistently they're bouncing between $60, $40, back up to $60, currently going for $48. Mm -hmm. So clearly there's demand at close to $50 for this set. For that reason, I see it going easily for $60 to $70, but probably not ever much more than that. Maybe the $60 to $70 is if you're an Amazon seller, which we discussed earlier, we're not yet, maybe someday in the future. So I, in my mind, scale it down a little bit from what FBA would be down to, okay, I'm putting it on eBay. Yeah, pretty much the box and the shipping material is almost free, a little bit of tape, and that kind of stuff. But still, there's a little bit of cost there. You're going to have to pay the fees. And then again, I was saying that the $50 wouldn't include shipping. So it'd be 50 plus the $8 of shipping. And so after you pay the little bit and take the fees out, I think your cash that you're getting is about 42, 45 bucks. And so if I could get them for 25, then I would consider it. But at 31, it's not enough of a turn per unit. Yeah. Right, so David, my last good set, bad set is a CMF minifigure series. Can you guess which one it is while I'm sharing screen? I would guess that it's the Disney 100. That's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Wrong. Series two. <laughs> oh, bro. First... You know, I hate Marvel. I know. But the first CMFs in these boxes. Get this off my screen. <laughs> CMF Series 2 for Marvel. Let's see which ones are popular. The She-Hulk, $9. Werewolf by Night looks pretty good. I knew the Moon Knight would be a popular one. And then Storm. So some of these look pretty good. Yeah, Moon Knight. Yeah, okay. Here's the thing. You have to remind yourself, if you're looking to hit a home run with an investment, like what are you hoping to have happen? And like with Lego Star Wars play sets, what you're hoping to have happen is to have an exclusive minifigure go to $100 that carries that set's value, you know, into the multi hundred dollar range. That's what you're hoping to have happen. With the CMFs, look at the all time growth list. What are you looking to have happen? Most of these do very middlingly. And everything that I feel about the Slave One Microfighter, I feel about this already. Like if you enjoy these, great. If you want to turn a profit, why are you selling these little items you get for $4? Somehow you're going to sell them for 15 and it makes no sense at all. So I'm down on this. There's an important question that we need to ask. And I did want to look up Marvel Series 1 here on eBay and see if any of these are doing okay. And like you said, you know, you buy them for $5 and maybe they go for 10 to $15. So not very exciting and not worth the time and effort. A couple of them look good. But let's get back to the fact that this is the first CMF series that is in the cardboard boxes. I think I've heard that a lot of people are breaking into the boxes to like take a peek. So you can't feel them to figure out which one you're getting. I don't think there are going to be many of these out in the wild that are either taken care of or unopened. So these could be very, very rare. And I am curious if some of these end up going to $30, $40, 50 The one time I saw them in a store that wasn't Lego store, there were about 30 of them. They were all ripped open. Parts where bags were laying here and there. Some of them were gone. Some of them weren't. It was an absolute mess. Clearly somebody was trying to find the right ones. And that's an absolute shame. But I don't think Lego thought through how much people don't want to blindly buy these minifigures and just have it be an absolute guess. What's the point though? They're all equally reasonable reasonable, you know, you could say maybe the, the Wonder Woman is going to be more likely to be valuable than say Wolverine, or you want to pick Wolverine instead of, I don't even know any of these characters. I'm still not getting into these. It's just not worth it. Less to talk about how much money you could make on them, but more to talk about that these could be some very rare minifigures. That's fine if other people want to road. speculate on that. Personally, I'm not. I'm just not interested. I tend to invest in sets that I am also somewhat interested in because I find that it gets me a, a level.
leg up on determining demand and what's good about certain sets. If it's a set I personally wouldn't want in my own collection, I'm pretty likely to not go for it for investing unless it's a clear home run. Because I think that your own personal passion behind a set actually drives you to make better decisions and drives you to be more focused on it and to have better data and be watching it more closely. So I agree. And I know you're not a Marvel guy. And so I knew you would chuckle and say that this is an absolute no. I just want to share a little screenshot here. I posted this to my channel. This set has since sold out, but here it is. 75309, the UCS Republic gunship, the only one ever made. Possible we could go another 20 years before we see a UCS gunship again. But you can score this for $280 with double VIP points on top of this, as well as a pirate gift with purchase. And uh, that is exactly what I did. This is now the fourth most total cost invested into any set in my inventory. It's crazy how these gunships add up, but at $280, you just can't lose. And after Rakuten and sales tax and everything, my total out-of-pocket cost was about $290 for this, which is about 26% off, 27% off. There's no question in my mind this will one day be a $1,000 item. The question is, do you want to wait that long? And I think very quickly, it's going to be a six or $700 item. And I am frustrated right now. I'm frustrated with you. I'm frustrated with Lego. I'm frustrated with the world because I saw this deal come through on the Lego deals. And then you even texted me and I was out and about. I threw one in my car on my phone. I didn't have my wallet. I literally didn't have my wallet with me. And so I couldn't make the purchase then. And plus I was like, let me get back home. So I was like, let me do the computer. So I get home. First thing I do, come to the computer, throw it up there, throw one in the bag, still good to go. I was planning on getting three. And I stepped away for like half an hour and I was something with the kids. And I think, you know, grab some lunch or whatever it was. But but then I came back and it was sold out. And so I think it sold out in right around four hours and I absolutely missed it. I have no excuse and nothing to blame except myself. I just didn't jump on it quick enough. I know you love this set and I know it's great for investing and I made a fatal error. What can I say? I tried to help my friend out <laughs> with a great opportunity and uh, he was slow on the draw. So you violated the number two rule of Lego investing. My top two rules of Lego investing. Everyone's getting it right here on the podcast. Podcast. Here it is. You have to watch prices very closely, step one. And step two, you have to know it's a good deal when you see one. As soon as you saw this, you should have been jumping on it. I immediately ordered one, ordered two. So this is like my pickup of the week, I would say. I'm excited about it. And like I said, I'm about 60% done spending my capital for this year. So you like that gunship, huh? I spent $1,000 on gunships yesterday. Indeed. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I feel good about it. That's great. I hate that stupid set. <laughs> I have a set that I picked up a couple of recently that I I am pleased with, but I feel like everything we talk about from this point forward is just a letdown based on, you know, your dumb gunship set that you just picked up. But I'll still show you anyways, just for the fun of it. But it is this very pleasing to look at and fun to build with great minifigures, Winnie the Pooh idea set. After factoring in the cash backs and the rewards and the gift with purchase, I got a couple of these at about $48 each. But that factors everything in including the gift with purchase. But it also does factor in tax. So Honey had a $15 reward on this set. And then also it had another, I think one or 2% cash back, which isn't huge. But then with the 5% VIP points at the time, so this was a few weeks ago, but then this set for $100, you could get the Disney 100 gift with purchase that we looked at earlier in this video. And that one, although it's gonna, I'm gonna hold on to it for a little while because I wanna see it bounce back. But if that one can get, get me 50, 40, 50, 60 dollars, then I'm really excited about picking up a couple of these for that price. What do you think about the fact that it did not sell out during the last time that the 40600 was available? I mean, normally like in past, you know, times with a really attractive gift with purchase, this set has sold out, the Winnie the Pooh, yep. but I think during the last time it did not. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I really don't know. I wonder if because the focus was so much on the Disney and the Disney 100 and you had to buy Disney sets in order to get that gift with purchase, Maybe some people just kind of overlooked and they were, you know, in the mindset of, I want to look at traditionally known Disney themes. Winnie the Pooh falling under Disney isn't something that everybody readily knows, whereas Mickey and Minnie and all the other Disney characters we do know. So maybe it was overlooked a little bit. The way I was able to get this great final price on this set was because of that extra ended up being about $16 cash back from Honey. Each reward is a one-time use, but you get one and then you either have to wait a day or a couple of days until the system allows you to go do it again. So you can't really load up using Honey, but you know if you want to go wide and not tall, you can certainly get some pretty good deals 
using honey. Well, speaking of going wide versus tall, in terms of total number of SKUs I'm investing in in 2023, in terms of sets that I've spent at least $100 on, there's like 15 of them. So I'm fairly wide this year. Mm. I'm somewhat deep, but 15 different sets that I'm invested in. I think I'm a little wider than I actually was planning on this year too. It's just, there's some different things to try to test out, right? Like you learn a little bit by doing that. So each year, the strategy is a little different. Yeah, I was I was studying all the sets you had behind you. Oh, you're studying my little build there? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I like that. Thank you. That's all custom, 100%. Is I build e- like a five-year-old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're two years ahead of me. Is that an Ewok village or what do you have back there? It's a, it's a little bit of a... I'll give you the tour. Sweet. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is a little bit of a uh, Kashyyyk resource offloading plant it's pretty cool this this piece rotates it's a little like fishing platform so all this is very cool 100 custom so that's it that's my well, build well david i gotta say man i'm pretty impressed by that that's actually pretty cool that thank you great. so much i've always loved kashik as the the color palette i like to build custom mocks with lots of like dangly bits and bridges and like mm-hmm. kind of altitude and stuff like that i mean even from here i could tell it looks neat i'm impressed the most the most impressive thing if i could just brag real quick is that i built that entire thing up on that shelf brick by brick i did not build it down on a stable surface so it's been very hazardous i don't know i just it was a uh, like therapeutic to stand there and just um you know build when i'm feeling cool. like i need to think about something meditate that's cool that's very yeah. cool. You know that I like these dioramas. And so I just want to look at them. I have not picked up more than one of the Death Star Trench Run. But as you can see, I like the Dagobah Jedi training diorama the best. And then the Trash Compactor. This is a Walmart exclusive. I like second best. And these both retail for $90. And I got them for all in at $60. And I think that was around the May the 4th promo. So it's been a little while, but those still remain as some of my happier purchases. Part of the reason is when you buy in and you think you're getting a good deal, you don't know for sure until some months go by to see, hey, are you going to get burned by an even better deal that happens in the future? So far, 60 is the lowest I've seen on those. And uh, fingers crossed, either we get another great opportunity or that I hit it at the bottom. We'll see about that. You're only so-so on the dioramas, I think, right? I own very few. Yeah, I'm looking at my spreadsheet. I own a couple of the Jedi training. I may pick up a couple of the others before the end of the year, but no, I'm not heavy into the dioramas. I don't really like them. I only really picked up the Dagobah because my price average is very good at $63 on those Mm -hmm. after everything. And I just like the quote on that one. Do or do not. There is no try or something like that. Do or do not. There is no try. You've got one behind you. I've got one down on a shelf that's out of view down there. The two latest dioramas look great. So you're talking those boo. What don't you like about this one? Too small. Uh, Bad trees. Oh, I like it. I like the artistic liberties they took with hacking off trees. I didn't like it at first, but I've gotten used to it and I do like it. Give me it 40% off with a gift with purchase or 30 percent with double VIP and a good gift with purchase and I'll consider it, but it's yeah. too expensive. For I want that for like $50 max. Yeah. I'd be happier at 45. Like and I, how about I this one? This one looks really good. It looks good. Like I could sell that for maybe a hundred, but I need yeah. to get it for like literally 50. Yep. Yep. But the last thing I want to point out is that da, 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 we don't have pictures yet. But Uh-oh. What? We have two more. So the sub theme continues when it looks like the helmets are all done. This nice little sub theme continues on and these could be good. So I see pod race diorama. Bunta Eve. Is that referencing an episode one Phantom Menace pod race or is that from a TV show? I actually don't know. Well, if it is episode one, that would be sick. Some of the greatest episode one sets like Watto's Junkyard or the certain pod racing buckets. Those are awesome. We yep. need more episode one sets. And so as high on the list as like a Gian Ocean Arena is for a Master build- Builder Series set, I think a really large pod race set is also in the works. Hopefully we could be getting something like that in diorama form. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, of these two new ones, I'm definitely excited about the pod race one. I need a pod race with like stands and mechanics and pod racers and like equipment, lots of great decor. And we need an absolute boatload of minifigures. Like imagine a Yavin 4 price point set with that amount of figs or even imagine Gian Ocean Arena, $170. That'd be so good. I don't want to imagine that Yavin 4 set. That set sucks. Oh, Lord. Imagine a Gian Ocean Arena with the three creatures and a bunch yeah. of droids and Jedi and Gian Oceans and Dooku and Jango Fett. You know, I love the diorama sets. I was on an emotional high, but the second that you mentioned Yavin 4, I got depressed again. I was more thinking, I guess, of Master Builder series sets. Yeah, like the Cantina. Right, or like the Bespin. Now we're talking. The Lotus that I think may be retired 
firing this year. I don't want to go very heavy into, but I do want to cover my base and get at least some of every single speed champion retiring this year for 20% off. I think if you can get $16 speed champions, this is the last year you'll be able to get that. And I think that's an absolute win. So I was able to stock up on those with a little bit of Rakuten on top of that. Be sure to use some Rakuten if you don't have that already. Links in the description below. Most of my buying is done. I'm concentrating on just a couple of sets that I definitely want to load up on in terms of quantity. Very nice. Well, I agree with the speed champions. They're a great theme to play the field. They seem like they are evergreens. Now you'll tell me separately what two or three sets you're uh, you're going to load up on, right? Like we got that going on in the background, right? Like we don't need to share with everybody else, but you and me. I don't know. You try to pitch me a lot of weird stuff like the new Guardians ship just because you like rainbow sherbet flavored stuff. And so I filter out the nonsense. But yeah, we have a little text chain going. Like I tried to help you out, text you a gunship deal. You were yeah. too busy uh, doing something else. It's kind of like when you have friends and you invite them and they just kind of ignore you or they, you know, never actually join and you're kind of like, well, forget it. I, you know, they don't really jump in, right? Can you not let this one instance have you think like, hey, maybe I shouldn't text Kevin in the future when there's a good <laughs> deal out there because uh, I'm ready. I'm, I'm locked. I'm ready. Generally, I just feel that there's enough to go around. And so, of course, if I see a good deal, I'm definitely going to buy my what I want first. Yeah. Then I'll share it. I'll text it out to like you or like trusted friends or like anyone that I think of. And then I'll maybe I'll post it to my channel in the instance of the UCS gunship if it's yeah. a really, really good deal. My philosophy of Lego investing is that there's enough money to be made despite the recession coming. Look back at what happened in 2008 with a lot of those era sets. Recessions can be pretty good yeah. for Lego investments. Yeah, it means it that can. a lot of people are skipping out on expensive purchases that down the line means the supply is a lot lower. So look yeah. up what happened in the last like big recession. Look at what happened in 2020 and load yeah. up. From that angle, I think actually we went out in the long run by talking about it, building the trust and the partnerships because then, you know, you and other people will look out for you, make you aware. And that way, if you are caught flat footed like I was, somebody's probably looking out for you, even though I didn't take advantage of it. I think yeah, what you're saying is that you owe me one. I wait a minute. Slap that like button, hit the subscribe button, subscribe to KDX Bricks Analytics. Buy very carefully. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.